Okay, I've had a few questions quite recently regarding how menu systems, links and buttons work in Squarespace. So I thought I'd package up a nice little tutorial for our coffee clip. And that's where we are today. I'm going to jump in in just a moment. But first of all, there's something that's really important to know. This is July 2022 and there's been a very recent update where Squarespace has moved across to what they call their fluid engine. This essentially means that a lot of what we've become familiar with, this scaffolding rigid approach to building pages has now changed completely. We have a lot more control, which is great for us designers. However, I do believe it's made it more complicated to use for a starter. So you don't have to jump over to the new engine if you already have a website that's in production before that change. Once you do make the change over, that's it. You will not be able to go back to the old engine, so choose wisely. Okay, enough of that. Let's jump in and show you a few tricks of how we can customize many systems within Squarespace. Start off with and click edit, and then we're going to edit the site header. In the industry, it's called a masthead. Doesn't matter what you call it as long as we know where we're editing. So once I've clicked on that, I can now go to a few different options. We've got the option to change the title here and the logo. We can add and remove elements to this masthead. So if I wanted to remove social links, they're, they're gone with just a toggle. If we do enable them, we've got the option then to choose our websites or social media accounts to link up. Please note that's different to social media feeds we would have to go through a few extra steps to link up Twitter or Instagram feeds on your Squarespace website. Okay, there's also a new option, which is very handy to us in Wales. We got, if I've pronounced that properly, now have an integrated multilingualizer built into Squarespace as well. So that's an option we can toggle on and off. But of course, we need to create an account and activate that before we can put the language toggle in place. And we won't be doing that today. Okay, so that's some of the basic options. We can turn the button off and on in the top right hand corner. This will be styled by the overall site styles as well. So we can change the color of that button via that, or we can go via the style option here and we can choose then whether we want a solid background for a masthead, which I think I'll go with that just for clarity so we can see it nice and easy here. Okay, the one thing I've had a couple of questions about is, can you have a sticky header? So this is where the masthead sticks to the top of the page when we scroll down through the page. And yes, we can achieve that via clicking on this fixed position slider here. We've got two options. We've got the option to scroll back where the masthead folds back as you scroll down through the page, but we're going to keep this on basic for now. So that means it just stays fixed no matter how far down the page you scroll. I'll click off that. Click save in the top left hand corner and that change should now be in place. There we go. You can see it even just reduces in height a little bit so we get more of this retail space on our website as we scroll through. Okay, let's move on to buttons. So we've got one here which we're going to use as our example. Now this is where this fluid engine comes in. I can move that around and that can freak out quite a few people. I have no doubt. I think a lot of designers will light up looking at this feature because now all of a sudden there's a fluidity to the way that we can design. But as I mentioned before, it's a double edged sword. I will be creating a number of tutorials around the fluid engine once I've had more of a chance to get my head around it myself. So now I've clicked on that button. We've got a few options here. We can change the text. That appears on the button. We can then change the URL or link and we can go into the design setting and choose whether it's a primary or secondary button. In the site styles, we can edit what those look like. We could also choose whether it fits to the box or fills the box as in the full width of it. If we choose fill, we can then adjust the height. If we go into the cog for the link, this is where we've got a few more options. So should we want to link to an external website? Good practice is usually to open in a new window. If we're linking internally between pages, we wouldn't have that option selected. But just to show you that's working, I'm going to click on open in a new window, press save, click off that. Once again, save in the top left hand corner. 
If you're a Squarespace veteran like myself, one frustrating feature may be the number of clicks now that we need to go through to update and edit a page. I understand there's a lot more features within Squarespace now, which is great, but it, it really is that balancing act between the two. Okay, that opening a new window isn't working here. It's probably because I'm in edit mode and still built into the site. So I think we can go by the assumption that that will work by making sure we've clicked on that slider to open in a new window. Our final setting will be, we're gonna add a new link to this footer menu. So if we click edit, edit footer, and we're gonna say, create a link to a privacy policy. One option is I can click at the end of that text and then press enter a few times and it will create the spaces for me. A nice little cheat is if you just highlight everything between those two, copy that, control C or command C on a Mac, and then control V to paste, and then we've got nice equal spacing between each of the items. So now we've added our text. The final step then is to link that up. So we can highlight the text in its entirety. What we can't do is just highlight one or two letters because it will only make those letters a link. Then click on this chain icon. I'm just gonna put a website address in there. Click on the cog, open a new window, save, apply here. This is what I'm talking about, all the clicks involved, save in the top left-hand corner. Okay, and we now have a new privacy policy link that should open a new tab and go to Google. Okay, it worked that time. So there we go. Three different ways of working with menus and buttons and links in our Squarespace site. There's a load more to cover as well, but I thought those were some handy little tips to get you on your way. See you next time.